How's it going, guys? Today I'm going to show you what it's like to drive the all-new CT5V Blackwing from a first-person point of view. Under the hood is a 6.2-liter supercharged V8 that makes 668 horsepower and 659 pound-feet of torque. Zero to 60 happens in 3.4 seconds, and it's mated to either a 10-speed automatic transmission, which this model is equipped with, or the better transmission option, the almighty six-speed manual. The outside of the CT5V Blackwing looks fantastic. There's nine exterior color options, three different wheel options to choose from, and six interior color options, giving you 162 different combinations of specs. So chances are you won't see the same one. Now, for $9,000, you can upgrade to carbon ceramic brakes, which this one has. I'd save the money and spend it on the exterior carbon fiber package, carbon fiber rear wing, rear diffuser, side skirts, and front bumper. I think it looks a little bit more aggressive that way. The interior of the Blackwing is super nice. Standard are the sport bucket seats, which look fantastic. I love the two-tone. Now check out the bucket seats from behind, full exposed carbon fiber on the backs of them, which is fantastic. And you have tons of headroom and legroom in the back seat of the Blackwing. Let's hop inside. On the inside now, we've got this Super Cruise light up here. We'll demonstrate Super Cruise later. Nice leather wrapped steering wheel, the 10 speed automatic transmission, nice infotainment. Although for the 2025 model, they are going to upgrade to a much better looking seamless curve display like in the Escalade V. The seats are very comfortable and supportive and I just love the design language of them. Carbon fiber interior accents. I do wish something like this was in carbon fiber. It looks a little bit chintzy. Now, down here, we've got heated seats, cooled seats. We've got a wireless charger right here, some extra storage space here. And then to change the different driving modes, we go down to this selector right here. Go ahead and click that. Let's go to snow and ice mode, which is kind of funny in a sports car. Track mode is my absolute favorite. It's got this horizontal layout. It takes a little bit of time to load. I wish it was a little bit faster, but I think that looks absolutely fantastic. Now, if we go back into my mode, we can fully customize the driving experience here on the screen. So if we click edit, we can now customize the steering, the suspension, the brake feel, which is pretty cool. Now, if we go down here, you can also select different traction control settings, race two being the most extreme, and we can go all the way into wet mode. I like to leave it in race two, which is nice. We also have this little camera right here, which scans your face to see if you're paying attention when you activate Super Cruise. All right, let's take this thing out on the road and see what it's like to drive. I also love the quick little shortcut. You click this, puts it into V mode, and that you can customize to be a full-fledged track beast. Behind the wheel of the CT5V now, and this thing is an absolute monster. The torque comes in at such a low RPM, you almost don't even have to downshift through some of these corners because at 3000 RPM, you're surged into the back of your seat with 659 pound feet of torque. And man, at the top end, this thing absolutely rips. We've got Magnaride suspension, so it soaks up bumps well. In tour mode, it's super comfortable. You could daily drive this. And then if you put it into track mode, the suspension firms by a significant margin. But man, this thing is so fun in the corners. I've got traction control in race two, so it's severely reduced, but still got a little bit to keep you in check when you hit water like that. That got a little squirrely. <laughs> now, I do have a complaint about this gearbox, and that is, if you don't shift prior to redline and you let it touch redline a little bit, it holds it and kind of puts it into this limp mode, this limbo mode for a bit. So watch this. If I touch the redline, it's holding and it just gives you this crazy lag that feels like a conventional automatic, which it is, but I wish they could tune it so that if it bumps into the red line a little bit, it's more forgiving. Obviously, the transmission of choice is to go with the six-speed manual. It's an awesome setup, and the fact that you can get a manual in a car like this is just a blessing. So choose it because it's cheaper and it's more fun. But the upshifts do sound unbelievable with this 10-speed automatic transmission. I can't believe transmissions are just getting more and more speeds. 10 feels ridiculous, but... It does work really well. Better fuel economy 
and it accelerates very, very fast. Zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds with the automatic is no joke for a rear wheel drive car. But where it really shines is that mid-range torque and the driving dynamics. The suspension provides plenty of feedback. I wish there was a little bit more feedback in the steering wheel itself, but man, it is such a good platform. The brakes work really, really well. These standard sport bucket seats hold you in place extraordinarily well, and they're comfortable at the same time. And this car is just such an awesome package. We'll get up here, practice some launch controls, and then maybe go through some different modes to show off something other than track mode in this car, although it's hard to want to do anything other than track mode, to be honest. All right, so come to a stop. We are in track mode right now. Race two preset, floor the brake, floor the gas. And off we go. Man, it sounds so good. It really reminds me of a C7Z06. Those just thwaps on the upshift are absolutely ridiculous. So as I mentioned prior, to change the driving modes, we can go down here, this mode selector. What I really like is, you can actually reduce the amount of info you get on the display. So right now we're in this really clean, reduced display. If I click this button right here on the wheel, up pops a whole bunch of information. Now let's go scroll through the modes. This time it gets a little bit confusing. I'll go ahead and pull over here. Sometimes it puts you into the traction control selection. So right now we can switch between sport, dry, wet, and then we can go up to race one and race two. And sometimes it's hard to figure out how to get out of the traction mode and get into just the mode selector for the driving mode. I think if I tap the traction control button, that'll put us back into it. There we go. So sport mode has a slightly different display. That'll pop up. The graphics are a little slow. I wish it was a little bit faster, but the good news is my other complaint with this car is the fact that it doesn't have the sexiest dash, but in the 2025 model, they're gonna put that beautiful curve display that's in the Escalade V. So we've got sport mode, which looks pretty cool. And then we'll put it into tour mode. And then if you go to my mode, it's fully customizable on the screen here. And I think it's funny that there is a snow mode uh, in a full-fledged sports car. So check this out because I think Cadillac Super Cruise is criminally underrated. So it's effectively Cadillac's version of Tesla Autopilot. It's super easy to activate and it works extremely well. So if we go ahead and put on adaptive cruise control, we turn that on first. Then we go ahead and click this button here. It looks like a little lane keep assist. When this lights up in green, it's activated Super Cruise. And because I've got a camera on my head, it's actually using this little camera right here to detect the fact that you're looking or not looking at the road. But if I didn't have this GoPro on my head, it actually allows you to do self-driving without putting your hands on the wheel for several minutes at a time, which is something that you can't do in a Tesla. Basically every 15 or 30 seconds, it reminds you to put your hands back on the wheel. But the Super Cruise is extremely impressive. It even detects whether traffic on the left of you or the right of you is moving faster or slower and will do automatic lane changes to make sure you're going the right speed or as quick as possible. But seriously, I wasn't expecting to be this impressed with Super Cruise. I do wish, however, that it worked both as a rev counter, like a shift indicator light, and as Super Cruise at the same time. I think that would be really, really awesome depending upon what driving mode you're in. But Super Cruise, super impressive. corners, it performs exceptionally well. It's very nimble for a larger sports sedan. I'm so impressed with the way this thing drives, and it sounds so good. That's one of the best parts about the car. That supercharged V8 sounds absolutely ridiculous on upshifts, downshifts, but particularly full throttle. It just sounds mean. I mean, listen to this. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.